Hey guys, it's Leo Stargazer. I'm here today with a Lenormand reading in honor of Mercury stationing retrograde. Mercury stations retrograde on August 23rd and will be in retrograde until September 15th. We have been in a process of review for a while, and that's going to continue through this. But let's begin the shuffle so we can get to the spread. Today, I chose to do a nine card Lenormand spread. And the nine card spread I find is really exciting because it's very detailed, which again, Mercury is gonna be retrograding in Virgo. The sun is going to is also enters Virgo on the same day where Mercury will station retrograde. So we're talking about details, reviewing details, focusing on details. Um, and in this process of review and in this detailed approach, the nine card spread, I think will be the most impactful, the most informative. It's also about information, it is Mercury. So let's go ahead and shuffle. My, my intention for this Mercury and retrograde spread is review, review, review. It's just the word review. And I know I've done that a lot. We've had a lot of spreads where the intention was review. Well, that is our intention. <laughs> it's our intention for all of Virgo season. It's been our intention for Venus retrograde, and it will definitely be our intention for Mercury retrograde. So I'm going to repeat the intention of review, 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 repeat it as much as I can while I shuffle. Okay, so with Mercury retrograding through Virgo, we are finding the pleasure in detail. What we want, we're, we're, we're in the pursuit of perfection as well. Um, so this part of the shuffle where I do bring the deck into chaos, which as you guys know very well, is, is really crucially important to me, um, I think is even more important as a response to Mercury in retrograde gonna feel like things are really complicated, potentially. It's going to feel like things are chaotic and unattainable. <laughs> Nothing is interacting correctly. We're gonna probably be feeling a lot of those things during this retrograde period. And that's okay because in Virgo, it's about the details. And in the chaos, sometimes detail emerges, especially if it's a focus. But now I'm going to bring the deck in to unity and we are going to interpret the details found in this unity to keep it simple the shuffle goes into chaos to remind us of what we aren't in control of but we bring it back into unity that is what we're, where we do have control. And the control that we want to get during Mercury Retrograde is a control over the details of life. Control over the technicalities of life. Of our pragmatic approach. But we can't lose sight of our intuition. So as I was hovering over, I was listening to my intuition. Maybe my intuition guided by Virgo. Maybe my intuition guided by Mercury. Maybe both. Regardless, I was letting that speak to me because if we're just pragmatic, if we just have a detailed approach, if we're just in pursuit of perfection, we'll lose sight of depth. We'll lose sight of the beauty that we've been finding on Venus's retrograde. We'll lose sight of that part of us. And we can't. Embracing the details can attach us to the divine, to the spiritual, to the intuitive side of ourselves. And that's really important. In fact, it's essential. In fact, it's the only reason any of it's worth it. A detailed approach to anything is totally not worth it if we uh, aren't using that to understand ourselves and better ourselves and others. So that's found through our intuition. So. Repeating my intention, review, 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 imbuing that into the deck, letting go, and then starting this nine card draw. So what I'm gonna do is I'll do three, three, and three, and then the way you read a nine card spread is from different perspectives within the spread. 
for the lunar mom. But first I'll draw all nine and then we'll go over it. Okay. First card I draw is the moon. The next card is the ring. Okay, then tower. The whip. The clover. The fox. The bouquet. the anchor, and finally, the cross. Okay, <clears throat> very interesting. Let me just straighten these out really quick so y'all can see all of them in all their glory. Okay. okay. So here is our nine card Lenormand spread. Now, all these nine cards have a relationship and hopefully they give us some clue about Mercury's retrograde period through Virgo. And they will. <laughs> um, definitely, just from first glance, I could see so much clarity. What I want to start with, though, is probably the most important, at least for our interpretive purposes, the most important position, which is the central issue. The central issue is the key to understanding the rest of the cards. It's our basis point for pretty much this whole reading. It kind of indicates what our approach should be, what it is. Remember, the Lenormand is really about practicality. That's another reason I wanted to do this specific spread for Mercury and Retrograde, because Mercury's Retrograde through Virgo is going to be all about practicality. And the Lenormand spread really does that for us. It really leads us in that direction. It is about action. It's clear. It's a little bit less cerebral and more straightforward. And that's what we want. We want to be focused on that. It also, the nine card spread gives us a lot of detail. So let's do that. So central issue is the clover. Well, I honestly could not be happier <laughs> seeing the clover in this position. The clover is lightheartedness. It's luck. It's um, a joy, almost comedy. The, that's really, it really is all of the things you kind of anticipate in when you think of a four-leaf clover. Just, it's those archetypes, very blatantly clear. So having that be the center of a reading about Mercury retrograde legitimately could not be better for, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I'm very, very excited to see that. I think what this is saying for me, how I'm going to interpret it is, if we really give into Mercury's retrograde period by continuing this journey of self-reflection, continuing this engagement with detailed focus, continuing this engagement with practicality and technicality, if we honor all of those themes and honor Mercury in this and Virgo, the whole process is imbued with luck. If we can approach all of that with a lighthearted nature, if we can approach Mercury retrograde with a lighthearted vibe, not an easy feat, but if we can do that, the whole process will be imbued with luck. So that's gorgeous. Center of our thing is luck and lightheartedness. Absolutely beautiful. That's how we should center our approach. If you are if you are getting too intense with this, if Mercury retrograde is just being too intense to you, remember the clover. Key. The next focus is the frame. So kind of what's framing our issue? 
And that is the four corners create the frame. So the four corners, remember in a Lenormand spread, we want to read it like sentences. One card informs the other. Usually they're read in pairs, so it helps to read a pair, a pair, a pair, a pair. Uh, and that's how I'll do it, for sure. But I think the frame is telling us what's framing the central issue. So maybe how can we approach this idea of a lightheartedness? How can we approach Mercury retrograde trusting luck, almost? Um, the frame can kind of at least tell us what borders, uh, what boundaries we're kind of in. So we have the moon, the tower, the bouquet, and the cross. So the moon is dreams, intuition, emotions, sometimes illusions. The tower is authority, almost bureaucracy sometimes, institutions, but also this idea of isolation, loneliness. So potentially it means, potentially I think what this could be saying is the frame, especially for Mercury retrograde, and this journey of self-review we've been on, is that there may be some, our, that maybe our isolatory nature here, or us being almost rigid in our approach to our dreams, is bringing in some isolation to that. So the tower is kind of saying, within our dreams, our intentions, our intuitions, there's maybe a sense of isolation. However, we then move to the bouquet. This is all part of the frame, all four are. And with the bouquet, we have pleasantness, beauty, gifts, almost. So how does the bouquet tie into the tower? If the tower ties into the moon by bringing isolation to the visionary journey, how does the bouquet tie into the tower? There's, I think for me, it informs it by adding a sense of beauty in isolation. It adds a sense of the gifts that this journey sometimes isolating journey can bring us. The bouquet does have a sense of social elements as well. If you think about, you know, you bringing a housewarming gift or something like that, there, there's that idea within the bouquet as well. So it's this idea too that there are gifts to be found, offerings within this almost isolating journey. But then we have the cross framing off everything. We want to start with the cross, how the cross informs the bouquet. Well, there's duty and responsibility in the cross. There's ideology in the cross. I think the bouquet here is tying back into the moon, similarly to where the cross is going to tie back into the tower. So this duty, this responsibility we have to the intuition, in, institutions we are in, the duty and the responsibility we have to ideologically approach this journey. We have a responsibility to isolate, not isolate, we have a responsibility to this inward journey, we ha we, to ourselves and others, to look inward, to approach these visions. But there's a beauty in that. There's a pleasantness in that. There's the gift that we are giving to ourselves and others if we can follow through with this duty. It's a beautiful responsibility. That's what the frame is. So the framework is saying visions, beauty, and pleasant. Visions are important. The whole goal is this. But our responsibilities, our responsibility, the need to kind of be a little inward, internally focused, it, while it is essential, if we imbue that with this sense of beauty, the sense of pleasure, pleas pleasantness, this lighthearted approach, again, bringing it all back to the central issue of the clover, then the journey of finding and embracing our intuitions and visions and dreams is worth it. It'll make it a lot easier if we can incorporate beauty and lightheartedness into an almost isolatory responsibility. Um, but that's how the frame is framing the central issue of Mercury retrograde. That's how we can bring it into luck, injecting this bouquet's beauty. But let's move on. As you can see, this is a very detail-oriented moment. Then we move on to past, which is represented by the first column, present, middle column, future, last column. With the idea of the framework, with the idea of a central issue, this should be pretty, we should have a pretty clear idea of what this is. So let's start with the past, the moon. So our pursuit of our illusions, I'm thinking this is hinting at our review as it's been so far, the journey we've been on so far. 
trying to find our intuition, trying to tap into our visions and our, you know, our dreams of a complete self-understanding. The whip, aggressiveness, assertiveness. We've had to be hard on ourselves sometimes. We've had to be strict with ourselves um, in order to approach this. But again, on the journey so far, we've been called to inject pleasantness, gifts, beauty, a little bit of social life into the journey here. So while it's been tough, we've also been incorporating beauty. So it ties right back in. So that's the past. And I think that's pretty accurate. I think so far in this pre-retrograde shadow season, in this Venus retrograde, there's been this sense that the review has been challenging. We've had to be stern with ourselves to get through it, but it's been worth it because there's been beauty in that. Now we're at the present moment. So as Mercury is stationing retrograde, what are we seeing? We're seeing the ring. So we are committed to the journey. We are committed to this project of self-discovery. We are, we are imbued with a sense of luck, guys. If we, we, are, we are beginning to learn to approach, maybe just through seeing this clover, but we are beginning to approach this commitment with a lighthearted nature. Knowing this is going to be a detailed journey, knowing Mercury Retrograde is just starting. Um, we're, we're imbuing that. And that's making us stable. We have the anchor. Stability. Long-term stability, too. So trust exactly where we are in the present is what I'm reading from this. Trust your commitments. They're full of luck and stability. The future. The future is the tower, the fox, and the cross. So again, we, we already know these two sides of it. So the institution part, the almost regimented but slightly isolating part, and the our duty, our responsibilities that we have um, to our ideology in order to the responsibility we have maybe to be a little isolatory on the journey. But then you have the fox. The fox is clever. The fox is cunning. The fox is selfish. The fox is self-centered. There is a sense of self-interest here. So these, this responsibility, this isolation is for a purpose. And that purpose is for us. For us to bring in self-care for us to heal ourselves, understand ourselves, and be able to move forward with a cleverness. We need to almost be selfish in our journey because it has to start from within. But there can be a lightheartedness and a beauty within that. We still need to be stern, but if we commit, we can be stable, we can find our visions. That's how past, present, and future combine. So future is maybe a little isolation, a little focus on responsibility and duty. That's Mercury retrograde in Virgo, guys. Um, but also clever, cunning, and for ourselves. That's where the isolation comes in, though. It's not just isolation to be lonely. It's isolation because you deserve self-care. And that's what this card is here to tell us. That's what the fox is here to tell us. Be selfish in this. That's cool. Self-centeredness when it comes to the journey. This is what this is all about. But we have this on our side. So then we move horizontally. Consciousness is the top. Reality in the middle. And the unconscious at the bottom. So our consciousness. What we, what we know. What we're aware of. We're aware that this is our journey. Visions. Illuminating. Um hidden the hidden sides of ourselves we're committed to that and we understand now that it's going to take some inward reflection <laughs> uh, maybe an almost institutionalized approach to this journey but we know that we're aware of what the tower is for us we know we're in the tower committed because we're going to pursue our dreams the reality of the situation so that's our consciousness, how we are perceiving stuff. How things actually are is the whip, the clover, and the fox. Very interesting. How things actually are is it's going to take a hard core approach. Mercury retrograde is the whip here. I mean, that's just what it's going to be. We've got to be stern. We've got to be assertive. We've got to be almost aggressive. But what do we have to be all those things in? An understanding that luck's on our side. 
Lightheartedness and The Whip are very, it's a very tough combination. But I think it's dealing with Mercury Retrograde, if you can do that with this idea of self, the self centered approach here, the self interested approach, the self care approach of the fox is what is also real. So it's really going to be tough. <laughs> It'll almost sometimes feel punishing. It's Mercury retrograde. But we have the clover on our side. We've got luck on our side. We know we can approach this with a lighthearted nature. And what's true also is that this is a self-focused journey. And that fox, the fox says that's okay. We know it's okay because it's the fox. Self-centered, self-focus is key. It might be tough, but we got luck on our side and we're doing it for us. Unconscious is the final row. Bouquet, anchor, cross. What are we not seeing? What do we want the moon to show us? What's the ultimate clarity we want to get from this tough but balanced approach, from this isolatory but committed approach? What is not clear to us yet? What are we trying to uncover in this Mercury retrograde process? Beauty stability, and how that ties into responsibility. That's the key. The ultimate goal is to uncover the unconsciousness. That's what the moon is. The moon is literally unconsciousness, hidden intuition, hidden visions, dreams. Here we have it. It's beauty and pleasantness, stability and strength. But our duty to ourselves, our responsibility to ourselves and others to go through this journey, to focus on ourselves, but be committed to it, to uncovering our unconscious, we can find beauty, stability, and that'll fulfill our responsibility and our duty. The whole picture of this nine card Lenormand spread about Mercury and retrograde in Virgo is very clear to me. If we lead with the central idea of approaching this difficult journey with a lightheartedness, if we understand our responsibility and our need to potentially be an inward, almost selfishly or self-centered or self-care focused, we can be committed to that. Understand though that the responsibility, it's Mercury retrograde, can sometimes, a review can sometimes be difficult. We can find beauty stability, and we can uncover our unconsciousness. We can uncover our intuition. We can embrace who we really are and make our dreams and visions a reality. If we go through this process of Mercury retrograde with a light heart, trusting luck, trusting ourselves, if we can gain a self-trust and a self-acceptance by the end of this review process, we can make our dreams come true. That's what this spread is showing me. Most importantly though, what I'm gonna carry with me is this card. Carry the clover through this Mercury retrograde, guys. You got this, we got this. Tune in if you need moral support, if you need to know how the journey is impacting all of us. I appreciate you guys so, so, so much. We're in this together. Let's do it. <laughs>